You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. Man, we have another show lined up for today. We're going to talk about keto for mental health. We have our special guest, Miss Nicole Laurent, and she has an awesome website that you should go check out. It's mentalhealthketo.com. Real easy to get to. First and foremost, we're going to get a little background story on her. I want to welcome her to the show first and say, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So for our audience Mental health is a big topic, is a very important topic, but we're going to be talking about keto for health, for mental health. Give us a little background story of yourself and what inspires you to take this path for your career. So I am a licensed mental health counselor and I have been working with people for, I believe, over 15 years now. Um, And I am a well-trained therapist in lots of evidence-based therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavior therapy, uh, EMDR, different types of really great therapies. And um, But the last five years, I have been helping people transition to ketogenic diets for the purpose of mental health and neurological issues. Um, And so I had my own experience where... I had a chronic pain syndrome um, and I I had some issues with my brain function, actually. Um, and so I went, I'll spare you the, the whole long story, but let's just say at the end of all those, I, I did not have a functioning brain um, and I was in pretty bad shape and I thought I was going to have to retire being a therapist. Um, I couldn't learn. I couldn't read. It was rough. And so um, I found out about ketogenic dietary therapy. They were talking about its use with Alzheimer's disease and with different traumatic brain injury and uh, Parkinson's disease. And so I became interested and I did it and my brain just kind of woke up and lit up and it was amazing and it started to heal it. And um, one of the things that I noticed was I felt much more kind of calm and relaxed. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. Why is that happening? Um, But I, you know, being a therapist for 10 years prior, I, of course, had all the skills that I needed to regulate what I would have considered normal levels of, you know, anxiety of being in the world. But after I implemented the ketogenic diet, I, I realized I had anxiety and I didn't even know I had anxiety um, because it just, it just changed my brain in such a, such a profound way. And so then I'm Uh, my brain is happier. I'm doing better. I'm thinking better. I'm thriving. And I'm in my private practice with people as a mental health counselor. And I am seeing them, you know, get better, but they're still struggling. And here I know about this therapy that I know is very helpful. Um, And so it was, it was rough because I'm watching someone suffer across from me and I was feeling like I couldn't talk about it. Um, You know, the whole stay in your lane thing and appropriate professional boundaries. And um, I'm not a nutritionist, so I shouldn't be talking about nutritional therapies. Right. Right. And after a while that just became absolutely unbearable to me, it felt completely unethical to not let people know about this. And I knew, I knew that it wasn't just my experience. It wasn't like I had an anecdotal experience and was like, Oh yes, this, you should try this. I mean, the, the internet and the social media platforms are just blowing up with people talking about how this has transformed their health or it has transformed their mental health. And so I knew it wasn't just me. Um, And so then I went back to a school for a postgraduate certificate in nutrition and integrative health. So I could feel like I had the right to talk about this with my clients. Right. But before that, I was like, Hey, you should check out this person or, Hey, you should read this. This, I've, I've been hearing this. Right. So I was trying to tell them, I was trying to steer them on the right path. Um, but I was really nervous about it. You know, obviously I didn't want to lose my license. And then um, after I got my postgraduate certificate in nutrition and integrative health, I uh, found a training by an MD called Georgia Ede, 
It's uh, ketogenic diets for mental illness and neurological disorders. Uh, that was specifically about using ketogenic diet for that. And so I went to that training, which is, you know, this is where doctors and prescribers go to get continuing medical education credits. So this is a this is a legit thing to learn in case anyone's wondering. Um, and I found I found and connected with all kinds of prescribers. Um, no uh, mental health counselors are a little bit rare. Uh, there there aren't continuing education credits for us in that program yet. But um, but there was all these doctors and all these nurse practitioners that were learning this and wanting to use this or were already using this. And that really gave me kind of the permission to be like, OK, this is where I want my practice to go. I will, of course, continue to use therapy with people. But this has to be communicated to people as an option. And what I have seen is when I combine the two, when I get someone with debilitating depression and anxiety or bipolar disorder even, and we put them on a ketogenic diet for two to three months, and then I start using these therapies, it is a totally different ball game because it is a lot easier to do therapy when your brain works even just a little bit better, when you can focus easier, when you can calm yourself down a little bit easier because some neurotransmitter imbalances have gotten better, when you can, um, you know, you just, you function better. Therapy's hard work, you know? So that's, that's me mostly. This is Nami Focus Radio talking to our guest, Nicole Laurent. And when it comes to applying keto, um, kind of educate the audience what that looks like and what you practice as far as using this with your clients. Yeah. So, you know, I take insurance. Um, and so I get people from all walks of life and all differing levels of knowledge about nutrition and and um, so it really kind of depends. On, I always meet people where they're at and I find ways for them to tie in what they eat, what they don't eat in with how they feel. Um, and that's usually the first beginning of a conversation about diet and nutrition and the effects on the very direct and intimate effects on mental health that happen for people. But when I when I uh, when people ask me, are you taking new clients? In addition to my usual informed consent, I will send as optional a ketogenic dietary therapy informed consent. So that's my way of letting people know that this is on the radar and this is part of what I do. And so then that makes it a lot easier for them to bring it up to me or for me to bring it up to them as a, as a possible therapy. They've been introduced to the idea that this, this might be part of our work together. And then we talk about um, therapeutic carbohydrate restriction and what would that look like and what do meals look like that are restricting carbohydrates and what do you eat and um, and how do you track food so that you know how many carbohydrates you're getting and uh, making sure you're getting enough fat. So ketogenic diets for neurological disorders and mental illness is a little bit different than the ketogenic diets that you see all over Facebook, for example, where people are trying to lose weight. There's some nuances to it. And so uh, it's very important that carbohydrates are, are uh, monitored and, and measured and people get the hang of that. And so, yeah, we just, we just talk about it. It's just part of our relationship building. It's, it's part of kind of uh, coaching. And we talk about the different underlying mechanisms that are modified uh, biologically and neurobiologically on a ketogenic diet. And so people are always really interested about that. Do you also have case studies on your website that people can read with some examples of people who were able to see improvement with the different practices that you use during the process? Mm -hmm. So um, not all of my, not all of my clients choose to do a ketogenic diet some of them choose to do more of a whole foods. Um, you know, it really depends on the client. But for those that do choose to do ketogenic diets, I and 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 really, I mean, here's the thing: the people who come to me sometimes I'm like their fifth therapist, you know, and they are on different medications or they're they're not on medications because they find that the medications have side effects that they just can't tolerate or they don't like. Um, and so people are actually much more open to learning about this than I thought they would be. 
Um, but I have, so for example, let me think. I have uh, a few patients that are bipolar disorder. Um, I have one lady who was bipolar disorder, is bipolar disorder diagnosis and had, was on quite a high dose of lithium when she came to see me and she had a lot of kind of hormone, what she felt was hormone dysregulation. Um, so just absolutely falling apart about two weeks out of every month, just completely debilitated. Um, and so we, you know, and she didn't come in knowing about the ketogenic diet, but we talked about it and uh, we worked together and she was game for it. And probably within less, probably, so she found improvements after one month of the ketogenic wow. diet. Uh, she said she, her cycle felt a little bit different, felt a little bit better. Her mood started to stabilize. And then after about three months, she, she was doing fantastically better. And we continued to see each other, not necessarily weekly, but probably biweekly. And eventually she reduced her lithium prescription by, let's see, it's been a little while, I, I believe by about 600 milligrams. So when I last, she started at 900. And when I last spoke to her, she was uh, doing a maintenance dose of, of 300, which is quite the reduction. And she was doing well and she was uh, pregnant and, and looking forward to that where she was, her functioning was so, so low before that becoming pregnant was not even an option because she wasn't sure that she could take care of a baby. So there's that person. Um, I have another lady who was bipolar disorder and not medicated, but really struggling with the depressive symptoms and um, of bipolar disorder. And she didn't know about ketogenic diets when she came to see me and we uh, started her on there and she you know, she was feeling great and, and she's doing great. And she's still my, my patient, my client. Um, yeah. So there's lots. And you recently had an opportunity to receive an award. And if you can tell the audience what that award is and, and how did that come across as an opportunity for you? Oh my gosh, that was, that was amazing. So, um, so, so after, after I did that training with Georgia Ede and I saw all those clinicians being brave and doing their thing and inspiring me, I started my blog, which uh, mentalhealthketo.com. And I did, I probably wrote an art, one or two articles every week. A lot of them are really big. Um, and, and I went into the literature and I tried to find, you know, what diagnosis you know, what did we, what did we find with these diagnoses and how did the ketogenic diet have underlying, uh, mechanisms that may, that might modify those? Because I was seeing all these different disorders in my practice, OCD, binge eating disorder. I was seeing depression get better. I was seeing different flavors of anxiety, you know, get better generalized anxiety disorder, bipolar, which is, you know, supposed to be medication based your whole life. Um, and I was like, there's got, what are, what, how is this working? How is this happening? And so I got really curious and I started my blog and I think there's, oh, there's well over 60 articles on there now, but so, uh, Jan, uh, Jan Ellison, Jan Bazuki um, from the Bazuki group uh, contacted me. Now that group, so Jan's son, Matt had bipolar disorder and was quite debilitated. Um, and they found in their journey to try to get him well, they found a ketogenic diet and it just completely transformed him and made him well, quite frankly. And you can learn more about him, um, him and, and that whole thing on bipolar cast. That's a podcast on YouTube. So if you want to hear Matt's story, that's on there. But anyways, his mom, Jan reached out to me and she said, Oh my gosh, I love your, I love your website so much. And do you want to meet? And so I met with her. And, um, and, you know, and, and that whole time I'm going on different podcasts because again, I just really want people to understand that this is an option and it's a good option. And quite frankly, it's an option that might be quite superior to medications because of the way these effects work holistically in the body and on different, different pathways and 
So I was on a podcast rampage and, um, and anyways, uh, so I met Jan and then, a, you know, a while later, uh, oh, she, she had, she brought me into this community of all these metabolic psychiatrists, right? So the ketogenic diet is a metabolic intervention in that it changes how the brain and the body uh, use energy and make energy, basically. So there's this field called metabolic psychiatry. So I'm in heaven, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm on this listserv with all these like super brilliant researchers and metabolic psychiatrists, right? But then the Bazuki group, uh, they announced this, this con contest award, um, in, in conjunction with the Milken Institute, which is a philanthropic organization. And the description sounded exactly what I did, which, you know, is about educating and trying to tell people about that. Um, and then seven people won and I was one of them and I won some money, which was unexpected and wonderful. And, um, and yeah, it's just really nice to be, uh, acknowledged for, for a labor of love and for people to, to know that, uh, that you care about it and, and, and to be seen. And once again, this is Tommy Focus Radio talking to Nicole Laurent. And with this ketogenic uh, diet and practice, really interesting question. Hopefully, it's a good question for you. If someone hears this and they're like, oh, well, I'm going a, I'm to a Google and see how I can do this myself. Why would it be very important that someone will get with someone like yourself to make sure that they do this correctly versus do the old, let me go Google this and see if I can do it myself idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. And, and there's probably people in the metabolic psychiatry community that feel a little bit different about this than I do. So if you are on any kind of medications, any kind of prescription medications for diabetes or blood pressure, or uh, maybe even uh, cardio metabolic problems, you know, heart issues, you, you absolutely need a prescriber. And if you are on any type of psychotropic medications, you absolutely need a prescriber. And let me, let me tell you, so this is the part where I believe all of my, med, I know all of my metabolic psychiatry buddies completely agree with me on this. Do not do a ketogenic diet without the help of a prescriber if you have mental illness or any kind of um, prescription drugs that affect blood sugar or heart rate, okay? Yeah. Because the diet is very, very powerful and it changes things and those affect your medications directly. And so nobody should do it on their own unless they have a prescriber who can modify those medications, okay? And what we see happening in, so, you know, I'm a mental health counselor, so I'm always quite interested in the, psychotropic medications. And what will happen almost always um, is that people will need their medication doses adjusted because the ketogenic diet helps people's brain function so much that their current level of prescription becomes too high and they start to get side effects from that medication at the same dose that they have always been. And if they go to a prescriber who is not educated on ketogenic diets, then that prescriber might say, oh, you have anxiety. Well, we're going to add a pill. We're going to add a pill. We're going to add a prescription. When really sometimes, often, most of the time, not always, on a ketogenic diet, again, I'm not a prescriber. This is what I see. People need to have their medications adjusted down, titrated down. And then whatever that side effect was coming from that too high dose of medication goes away, right? So if I have someone on 300 milligrams of Effexor, my client, and they've been on that for, you know, five years and they do a ketogenic diet and suddenly they're getting uh, higher anxiety out of the blue, you know, and, and stuff like that, different types of side effects um, or suicidality that can happen. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to have a conversation with their prescriber, which they would have also to the, you always let your prescriber know that you are going to attempt a ketogenic diet, but it's, it's, Hey, 
maybe, you know, it's been sit three weeks to six weeks into your ketogenic diet, it might be time for us to start to titrate down to see if that's what's going on. If not, we can always add a pill, but this is an option. This is a piece that might be going on for you. And that is very counterintuitive uh, for people. You know, their first thought is, oh, oh, oh no, this ketogenic diet is giving me anxiety, right? When really what it is, is their medication dose is too high. Their brain does not need or want that high of a dose any longer. Now, it is fantastic when people can find someone like me or any medical professional that is um, trained in a ketogenic diet, a, a registered dietitian or a nutritionist. Um, that is, I, I want everybody to have access to that information and that knowledge and to, and to have that support. It's a big lifestyle change and it really does deserve support. That said, I don't think people can wait for the medical establishment to catch up and to start to promote these diets that are so life-changing for people. I don't want to see anyone wait or not try a ketogenic diet for their mental illness or their neurological issues because, oh gosh, you know, I went down to my local medical center and there's nobody who, who does that for me. There's nobody trained. For goodness mm -hmm. sakes, this is just food. This is food and, and we can make decisions about what to eat and how to eat. So there are lots of uh, ketogenic diet coaches. Again, you don't have to wait for a medical provider to help teach you how to do a ketogenic diet. Try to find one that does have training though in mental illness and neurological issues. Um, but but don't, you know, don't, don't wait for the medical establishment to catch up completely. It's going to be a while. And I want you to feel better a lot sooner than that. And to your point earlier, uh, the person can work with their doctor as well. In addition to using someone like yourself, for your, your services, because like you said, if they have certain things going on in their life and prescriptions, whatever, they really got to work closely with, you know, their doctor as well. So yeah. you have a blog where you really have a lot of different uh, resources of information. If someone is listening to this right now and they're like, man, this is the first time that I've ever heard something like this. What will be a good first step call to action that you have for our listeners to do to just kind of get their feet wet before they even make a decision if this is something that that they will need to use? Yeah. So, um, so making the decision about whether to do a ketogenic diet or not kind of depends on what you've tried in the past, hmm. right? So if I am someone who eats a standard American diet and most of my food comes out of boxes um, and I don't, and I, I know that I eat a lot of highly processed foods, you might not need a ketogenic diet. You might just need to knock out the processed foods and add a really good broad spectrum micronutrient, a good vitamin, you know, and, and, and start taking care of yourself that way. But um, if you, if you have been on several different medications that haven't worked, I mean, I, I have someone in my practice who has, um, treatment resistant depression and it's been suffering for over a decade. Um, and I just, just now transitioning him to a ketogenic diet, but this, this poor man has, you know, had, um, just about just every treatment we went through, like what, it, what therapies have you tried? What medications have you been on? What other therapies have you done? So this is someone who's done ketamine therapy. He's had, um, transcranial magnetic therapy, um, he's done, he's done the whole thing. And so if, if you are someone who has tried a lot of things or you've tried the things and they have not worked well enough, if you are someone who has, here, here it is, here it is. If you are someone that has said to yourself, well, I guess this is just how my brain is. Mm -hmm. I guess this is just, this is just going to be how I experience life. I guess this is just as smart as I'm going to get. Or I guess I'm just going to always, always wake up with this anxiety. Or I, I guess, you know, if you're one of those, if you're that person, I would suggest a ketogenic diet because I think everybody should feel what their brain feels like on a ketogenic diet. Um, 
because it's probably a lot different than how your brain normally feels. And that's, that's what we hear all the time. And it's usually a good thing. It's always a good thing so far. Um, so my website, so the, I would have them go to my website. Um, it is, it is mentalhealthketo.com slash blog. And there is an article on there called, I think it's keto diet rules for mental health. And it kind of talks a little bit about what a ketogenic diet for that purpose looks like. Um, and there are also, um, I'm trying to think of other, I'm blanking on my giant blog, all the different articles I've written, but there's lots of information there. And then I would, um, I would decide if I wanted to feel, try to feel better with that. Um, on that blog, there's all these different diagnoses. I'm sure many of your listeners identify with some of those diagnoses. And if they take a read of those blog posts, they will see why the ketogenic might be helpful. So they will actually understand the underlying mechanisms for why this might be helpful for their disorder. And so I would start there. And then it's a matter of getting a kitchen scale, downloading an app like Chronometer, which is spelled weird, C-R-O-N-O. M E T E R. And, um, and I would start tracking my carbohydrates and I would every week, you know, I, I, I'd eat for real. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat differently because I'm tracking my carbohydrates. I'd want to know what my good baseline carbohydrate intake is. Mm -hmm. And then I would slowly start learning how to cut that down and I would do it gradually over, you know, a few weeks. And, um, and I would take a good quality multivitamin because uh, micronutrient depletion is a big deal. And most of us have a lot of it going on for a lot of different reasons. But that's where I would start. And then I would make sure my prescriber knew what I was doing. And additional to that, you, you have many resources where people, they can take the step to uh be a part of the brain fog recovery program okay. and from there you have uh you have two links you have a begin here and it takes you to another page to read some mm -hmm. uh different resources information and then you have another one, another one where you can actually the individual can apply immediately to book a call with you yeah if, if someone's new to this will you suggest that they first click on the begin here to kind of educate themselves a little bit more before yeah. they contact you for the call yeah, so that that can be actually really helpful. So, uh, yeah, so I I am a mental health therapist and I do have an individual practice, but as you can imagine, it is it is quite full and I I can't meet the need of the of as many people that actually want to learn how to do this. And so I developed an online program um, that uses ketogenic diets as kind of the first stage and I called it the Brain Fog Recovery Program because what I found was that um, people really identify with particular diagnosis. And I did not want to create a new program for every single diagnosis, <laughs> right? So <coughs> brain health is brain health. There, there is not, so this is important for your listeners to kind of understand. There is not the, the idea that there is this imaginary line between neurological disorders and mental illness disorders. It, mm that is not really how the brain works. So some, when something goes wrong in the brain, some people will have a little bit more of a neurological flavor and some people will have a little bit more of a psychiatric flavor, but you know what? There's always overlapping symptoms between those two imaginary silos, okay? And so the Brain Fog Recovery Program, you know, mood disorder or mood, mood problems are part of of brain fog. I don't know anybody who's had recurrent or chronic brain fog that has not had low mood as a result, right? So that program, I really love that program um, because I it's 12 weeks long and I use a ketogenic diet for the first, the first phase. And then I also do, um, because I'm a functional nutrition practitioner, I will use nutrigenomics. So we'll look at their genes and see what genetic SNPs they have going on that mean they might need special forms or types of micronutrients. Um, and that's really important because if you, if you can't make carrots into vitamin A, for example, that affects your immune system. And if your immune system is affected, you're going to get more neuroinflammation, for you know, example, or 
There's some people who do not make something called choline the way they're supposed to, and we need to supplement that for their long-term brain health. So there's all these very personalized things about people that we can leverage in order to help their brain recover. And then the last part is functional health coaching, where we work to figure out any residual symptoms. And we really go hard on the lifestyle changes that need to occur for someone to be optimally functioning. So that is a way that I can help the public transition to a ketogenic diet um, that I offer on that I offer. And I really enjoy doing that with people. We've been talking to Nicole Laurent and you can go to her website right now, mentalhealthketo.com. She is a, an experienced licensed mental health counselor and she's very passionate about what she's doing. First of all, I want to say, Thank you for taking time. Your schedule talking to Army Focus Radio today. But before we let you go, one more call to action for the audience and the best way that they can be in touch with you. So the best way to be in touch with me, um, you can you can go ahead and subscribe to my email list, and um, you can download a free brain brain uh, nutrition guide, which is actually really helpful and informative. And then you'll be uh, brought up to date on any programs I have or workshops or anything big that happens in my world. Or you can just email me at Nicole at BrainFogRecovery.com. 